Aloha nui loa. My name is Peter Vieira. I'm a software developer at the Language Conservancy, and my pronouns are he, him. Today I'll be presenting Awoksepe, an online learning platform for the Lakota language, as well as its creation via collaboration with native communities, and finally how it's evolving to adapt to distance learning requirements, especially during uh, the COVID pandemic. First, I'd like to say thanks to uh, some of our major funding sources. So today, a uh, quick agenda is the community effort, people, places behind this effort, uh, the actual e-learning platform and its features, and then in addition to it, uh, which is our teacher portal to adapt to distance learning, and then a bit of usage data and feedback, uh, followed by some future efforts. So to start with, uh, the Lakota people are those who speak Lakotiapi or Lakota in English. They are comprised of various tribes uh, located throughout the central Midwest uh, of the U.S., primarily in the Dakotas. And it's a Siouan language, uh, one of the largest Native American language speak uh, speech communities, with fewer than 1,000 speakers. So a bit of background. Uh, some language projects started on Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, uh, and eventually through cooperation with schools and institutions, they formed a, an organization, nonprofit, uh, called the Lakota Language Consortium. Uh, and then a year later, the Language Conservancy was created as well as a, uh, as a nonprofit. And since then, uh, tons of products have been created and summer institutes have been held as well as rapid word, uh, word collection workshops. So since 2003, the Lakota Language Consortium has been producing quality classroom content uh, to make culturally relevant and pedagogically oriented material for learners of all ages. Uh, among these are this uh, Speak Lakota series textbook, as well as a, a variety of children's storybooks. So to date, over 100,000 copies of various LLC Lakota materials have been released. Some of the foundational materials, these three texts, um, form the central components for our revitalization effort. The first is the New Lakota Dictionary, uh, which has tons of uh, example phrases, and forms really the backbone of much of our work, especially our apps and databases. Uh, the second is a grammar handbook, which is for slightly more advanced learners, uh, all the way up to advanced. And then an audio series, um, which is a five-part five part series. Uh, next, we got into more into apps. So there's a vocabulary builder. Uh, that uses spaced repetition to help improve users' word and phrase recall. Uh, down on the bottom left is a media player, which basically utilizes augmented reality interaction with storybooks, enabling user-directed audio with print books. On the top right, uh, we formed a web and mobile versions of this uh, Lakota dictionary. And finally, we created a, or a learning platform, a learning forum was created uh, where organically a community grew uh, that can share questions, exercises, and expertise on the language uh, and the culture. So about at this time, things were kind of changing in the educational world. Uh, distance learning was becoming more abundant, uh, more focused on self-paced learning, learning online, making things more fun and game-like and access to teachers has become less and less. And actually, almost half of college courses are taken online now. So in order to uh, adapt to these changes, we created something called Awoksepe, which, uh, which means place of knowledge in Lakota. This is Awoksepe. Uh, this is the main interface that 
main page that users interact with each time they use the app. And it's on web and mobile. And so on the top left, there's a learning path. Basically, uh, we provide learning paths from general learning uh, to a grammar path or a vocabulary path. And then within each learning path are levels, each of which contain a series of units that users complete in a linear fashion, unlocking one after the other. And so within a single unit are lessons and exercises in a series, uh, followed by a review session for each unit. And the user has to complete uh, so many review exercises before they can unlock the next unit. This uh, red circle with teepees is the village forum. Uh, there's a general forum as well as unit specific forum for users to discuss topics and questions on what they're learning. So a little bit about what's behind OXP. So there's a giant database taken from these, uh, these corpuses I talked about uh, that are based on a corpus-based documentation approach in order to create a accurate reference of the language. So on the left is a general outline of what corpus data looks like. There's cards with the Lakota text and the English translation, and then some media and metadata, media like audio, image, um, and sometimes video. So there's an example of the word blue, the Lakota text to, uh, as well as the audio and image for that word. So these data get put into uh, lessons and exercises which create the unit. So an example of a, a lesson looks like this, where users are introduced to basic concepts uh, with a few translations and audio accompaniment. And the way it's set up, uh, it's capable of presenting much richer multimedia content. Each lesson in the current path is designed to introduce concepts in an easy to understand way that prepare the users for the exercises that follow. There are various exercise types. Uh, here I'm showing four. There's a multiple choice uh, exercise, match the pairs, typing, uh, where users can use their keyboard or a virtual keyboard that's part of the application, as well as fill in the blank multiple choice. And each of these are designed to target a user's competencies and skill learning differently. So as users progress through a learning path through these units, they're rewarded points and praise to encourage them and try to have friendly competition uh, amongst their friends. So after each unit, the user can quick review the content that they've just seen and are awarded badges. And they can see what they've been working on as far as reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills. Finally, uh, as part of the curriculum creation, a lot of work has been done to keep uh, native speakers and elders' uh, comments in mind and bring them into the actual creation process so that we can make it really part of their community. Uh, there are tools in a workspace for creating content and allowing that to be used by teachers and community members. And we continue to improve on that to uh, continue to record native speakers and gain advice on appropriate characters and artwork for this application. So distance learning uh, has definitely become very important, uh, reaching a max during the COVID-19 era. And so based on what I've shown you in this Awoke Spay app, uh, there are some problems that needed to be addressed. First, teachers couldn't cu customize content. They were stuck with what we had as units and levels and learning paths. Second, there's no support for classrooms. 
uh, class rosters, assigning homework, or even giving quizzes. And finally, teachers can't pro track students' progress. So in order to come up with solutions to this, uh, at the end of 2019, we created something called the Teacher Portal. And it was finally released in August of 2020, uh, mid-COVID. And so there are two parts to this. This on this page is the teacher interface. And there are four tabs to the teacher interface. This one is the classrooms tab, which allows teachers to add and edit classrooms and control who's in the classroom. On the bottom left, via drag and drop interface. And they can also schedule when units are going to be available, uh, if that unit is active, if there's an exam as part of that, um, or if it's just an optional unit. And so far we've had we've held five teacher trainings which have reached over a hundred teachers. And we've gotten tons of feedback, which has been really cool. Uh, so this lessons tab is great for creating the actual units and classes, classroom curricula that teachers want for their students. Uh, on the left side is all the units that are in a Wilkes-Bay. And then teachers can drag over to the right into their classroom the ones that make sense for their what they're teaching. What's also really cool is that they can share this with other teachers in their school, and then other teachers can use that, copy it, even change it, and use it as they need. The dashboard tab is actually this uh, student progress overview where they can see how students are doing in general, but then on the bottom, they can actually see on the fly real time data of uh, what students are working on and getting right or wrong to get better insight, uh, whether it be offline or during a class, uh, during a homework session, uh, what, what students are having trouble with, they're doing well with. And all of that can be downloaded. Finally, on the teacher interface is an admin page that allows administration of students and teachers as well as getting parental consent and notifications. So on the other side is the, stu the student interface. Uh, this shows up as a classroom tab on the main menu of the app. And it looks pretty much like the main screen that I showed you, uh, which is nice for students. But there's a couple extra things. There's a teacher message where they can post links. There's uh, a link to ask the teacher questions. And finally, what the units you see are actually the curricula, curriculum that the teachers created for them. So, so far, uh, generally on the Awoke Spay app level, there's been over 10,500 users. And in 2020 alone, 4,500 users. There have been over 4.5 million activities completed, with almost half of that coming from 2020 alone. There have been 14,000 hours spent using the app, with again almost half of that coming from this past year. So since August 2020, when the teacher portal was released, there have been 503 school users registered, uh, including 53 teachers. 36 schools have registered, and a total of more than 13,000 activities have been completed in teacher-created levels. Uh, and when you look at the data more finely, we see there's actually exponential growth. Uh, probably much to do with the pandemic, um, but also it gains traction the more people know about it. So after all of this use, we've gotten a bunch of feedback from teachers. First off, it's great for assigning homework. Second, uh, they many find that it's easier to grasp the concepts using a woke pay and its interface. Something really interesting is normally teachers have to often correct students continuously until the concepts 
uh, solidify it in their heads. But with a workspace, they can assign concepts via units, uh, and the students can practice these as much as they want at home. And then when they come to class, either uh, live or virtual, teachers and students can focus on uh, practicing concepts and communicative activities. Lastly, uh, as far as student management goes, many times there are a variety of proficiency levels in a class. And so more advanced students can use a WOKSAFE while other students are getting more direct help from teachers. So what's for the future? Well, we've been working on continually getting more feedback and implementing uh, requests from teachers to give them more fine grain control over the app, the lessons, uh, and, and how they actually create the curriculum. On top of that, we're starting to get funding and approval uh, working with communities on bringing this not just to Lakota communities, but other language communities like Dakota, U, uh, Ojibwe, and Crow as some of the first ones, which is really exciting. Uh, and the way the app has been made shouldn't be too much work. I look forward to all your questions at the Q&A uh, session in March. Thank you.